There are so many reasons to be defended today that being open is a a revolutionary and radical act. Welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I'm super happy you're here. On the show, I focus on creative thinking, problem solving, and living. Most often, I'll discuss how to ignite inspiration, meet challenges, and achieve goals through creative thinking. Sometimes, I'll have guests who give their perspective. Usually, it's people who are already living their best and most creative lives. Okay, let's get to it. Hello, and welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. This is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I am so happy that you're here. Today, I want to talk about the imposter syndrome. I know, I know. Oh, even just thinking about it kind of gives you a, oh, no, why am I talking about this? Well, I'm talking about it because yesterday I saw, I was at Chelsea Market and in New York City, and I saw a sticker uh, that was like one of those sweet hearts. Do you remember those? The Valentine hearts that you would give out as candy for Valentine's Day. And it said on it, it was a it was a big sticker on a window of a store and it said, love a creative. And I thought, oh, that's so sweet. That's telling us to love people who are creatives. Oh, that's terrific. And then I started thinking about it even more and went, hmm, how about love a creative, especially if it's you? right? So if you're a creative, how much time do you spend building yourself up? Because frankly, as creatives, our imaginations work overtime. That's the whole point of being creative, right? Is that you have this imagination that you then put to work to create amazing and beautiful things, whether it's art or music or speaking or writing, whatever it is, or dance, theater, it doesn't matter. But you use that incredible imagination to create these things. Well, here's the thing. As a creative, you also end up with this imagination that can work overtime in the negative side of the spectrum, right? It can sometimes be your worst enemy, your creativity, because your imagination will run amok and it won't run amok with how fabulous you are. Instead, it will run amok with all the things that you're probably doing wrong, that you could be doing better, that you aren't doing the way you're supposed to, blah, blah, blah. One of the things that I've been doing, actually, is I've been training to be a commercial voice actor. Now, I've done a ton of explainer videos and e-learning and webinars and other products, but I've never done a commercial. And here's the thing about that. I've never done it, and I'm studying to do it with the great Paul Liberti, who is incredible. He's incredible. If you're a New Yorker and you're interested in doing voice acting, run, do not walk to whatever class he's teaching. Anyway, so I'm studying this, and I love doing it. It's amazing work. And yet, what's weird about it is that it's supposed to be it's it, a layered performance, right? You're you're an actor. You're just only using your voice, which is incredible. Because you don't have any visuals. Uh, When you're doing voice acting, it's your voice and your body and your heart and your mind. So how do you do that? Well, you do it in a way that is almost the same as any other kind of acting, whether you're on stage or in a movie or whatever. But the thing about it that's weird is that when you're doing it, you're, you're relying only on... In, on yourself, on creating the character and making it uh, lovely and wonderful. And one of the things that Paul says is that our job is to make it look easy, right? It's to make it look effortless. It's simple. A- a- and if you ever study with Paul Roberti, you will hear this phrase a lot. It's so simple. I love this, right? So that that's what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look effortless. But of course, it's not effortless. You're You're doing a lot of work to make the performance happen. But here's the thing that happens to me, and this is why I had some imposter syndrome last night, and it was because I'm in class, I'm doing the reading I'm supposed to be doing, and it feels completely effortless. It feels like there's there's nothing actually happening. I'm just talking. And everyone was like, oh, that was great. And I went, really? I don't remember what happened because in the moment, I don't know what's going on. I'm just doing it. And that automatically, as someone who has 
uh, I was brought up with the work hard or don't bother doing it at all sort of mind frame, it made me go, maybe I'm just totally wrong. Maybe I'm so bad at, that I don't know what's happening. Do you understand what I mean? And my and you know this uh, this is a real raw and unedited podcast. So right now my cat is scratching my office chair. Ninja Kitty, stop! And um, so you're probably hearing the little scratches. Anyway, so yeah, I I started thinking to myself. Uh, first of all, I couldn't tell what my performance had been like in the read. I just couldn't tell. I didn't know. And second of all, I was about to ask other people and go, "How was I? I I have no idea." So I wasn't sure what to do because on the one hand, it's about trusting yourself. And on the other hand, I didn't know what to trust because I didn't know how I'd done because I had no real memory of doing it. And that's the key to me actually probably is probably when I'm doing my best work is when I'm so in the present that I'm not even putting it into my short-term memory, which is that's quite the achievement and accomplishment, and it's not something that I had ever thought that I would do as an artist, but there we are. So maybe that's the revelation is that if you're so in the present moment that you're not even putting things into your short-term memory, then that might be the time you're doing things most creatively and most imaginatively. Wow. But anyway, here's where the imposter syndrome comes in because I'm going do I have it? I have no idea because I don't remember it, right? And I have to be okay with that. And oh boy, is that a vulnerable place to be. And one of the other, one of my colleagues and other students in the class, we were talking on the way to the subway last night, all about this idea of being vulnerable as an artist. And it's frightening and it takes incredible courage to be vulnerable like that, because this is the innermost depths of your soul that you are offering to others, right? So there you are going, here's a little piece of my soul, yay. And that's great. (laughs) And it's also terribly scary. So this idea of the vulnerability means that we often just criticize ourselves, right? I mean, everybody does. It's not just the the sort of the bailiwick of the creative to criticize yourself. Everybody does it. We all, we all are, our own, are our own worst critics. And so how do we deal with that? What do we do about it? I would love to say that uh, I'm, you know, I, I don't do that so often. Yeah, of course I do. I evaluate and assess every single thing. And there's always something I could have done better, right? So it doesn't, there's never a, I'm totally satisfied with that. I'm never satisfied with anything in that way. I I always think that there was something I could could improve. And yet, you got to be careful with yourself about it, right? So that's where that love a creative sticker, that poster that I saw comes in. I guess it was a window decal. And it is all about Loving yourself, you know, especially if you're creative, that imagination will sometimes sabotage you because it'll go, when it goes to that yucky dark place, boy, it can be sneaky. So thinking about it from the different perspective of going, okay, let's, let's take that vulnerable part of our, part of ourselves and show it some love, show it, show it that, show it that care, because before you put it out there to others, you know, so that other people get to experience what, what you're doing, what you're creating as a creative or, or as an accountant, it doesn't matter. You have to be okay with it yourself, right? You have to be okay with what you're doing. Uh, the fear will stop you. The fear will cripple you. So the, the best sort of, uh, ammunition to fight fear with is love and it's love of self. Certainly it's love of your work. It's love of the vulnerability. And boy, does it weird to say that. It feels weird to say it because the idea of loving my vulnerabilities, uh, when I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well defended as a personality. So the idea of going, my vulnerabilities are sweet, makes me want to run screaming <laughs> into another room. So, and I don't know if that's just me or if other people go, yeah, um, yeah, I celebrate my vulnerabilities. I would say you're very, very healthy if you celebrate your vulnerabilities. Most of us want to just protect them, not celebrate them. So 
So yeah, uh, if you are in that space, good on you. And if you're not, I'm going to invite you to show yourself some love, especially those tender, soft places. If you can show those love and allow those vulnerabilities to come out just a little bit more, you're going to be amazed at what you create and amazed at what you do and develop, and also ultimately amazed at how you live. I would love to hear from you about this. If you have ever had these kinds of thoughts, and I'm betting you have because uh, we all have, I think, I'd love to hear from you. How are you doing with loving those tender parts of yourself and sort of accepting them? You know, uh, there, there are so many reasons to be defended today that being open is a, a revolutionary and radical act. So I would love to hear from you about it. I, this is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I am back with the podcast after, after a few weeks hiatus. I'll be back every Wednesday doing the same thing, talking about art and creativity and it turns out loving yourself and all of these other things. And of course, you'll hear periodically things about my cats and about being plant-based or as I like to call it, plant-powered. And I'd love to hear from you about what is going on with your life, with your creativity, so that we can all be in that more creative mindset, because I think creativity will save us all. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I send you all of my love. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and please tell your friends about the community we're building here. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright Isolde Trachtenberg 2019. Today's music was from Kevin McLeod, Laser Groove, and Avi Marimba, brought to you by Creative Commons License 3.0. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, I send you all all of my love.